So having a height map you can deform a mesh surface. It is used like a grayscale texture where every pixel contains a height information. Black is the lowest height and white is the highest height. The height map is also known as the displacement map as it displaces the vertices of a mesh. So imagine you have a mesh which defines a flat surface. And then you put the height map over the mesh and map every vertex to a pixel on the map. The corresponding pixel value is then the height information for that vertex. Use it to move the vertex upwards by this height factor. With this technique you can create real depth on flat meshes without manually modeling it. Just exchange the height map and you get a completely different surface by using the same mesh. In combination with regular textures, this is often used to create surfaces for 3D scenes, like floors, walls or terrains. So let's have a look on how this can be implemented with WebGPU. At first we must generate a surface mesh. For that we need a list of vertices to draw the triangles and faces. Also each vertex must have a normal vector, so we know into which direction the face is looking. With this vector, we know into which direction the vertex is being displaced. Also each vertex must have a UV, which maps the vertex position onto a 2D texture position. Knowing the desired scale and number of segments of the surface, we can easily implement a mesh generator with two for loops. Draw a quad with six vertices. Repeat it as many times as you need to get a mesh with lots of faces. The more vertices the mesh has, the more details can be rendered. This vertices data must be uploaded to a vertex buffer with the WebGPU API. I have already described in other videos how to set up rendering with the WebGPU API. You need to have a canvas, create a swap chain from that canvas and attach it to a so-called render pass descriptor. The renderer must have a function which gets called every time a frame can be drawn. Here your renderer initializes a render pass, provides it to all your 3D objects so they can draw themselves, and dispatches the rendering commands to the device queue. The 3D objects must have a render pipeline with two stages. The vertex stage and the fragment stage. Every stage has its own shader program, which are the computation instructions to the GPU computation units. The vertex stage calculates the vertex positions. Here the height map comes into place where each vertex will be displaced or moved according to the height map data. After that the system knows where to draw triangles and the rasterizing process happens so fragments can be drawn. The fragment shader calculates the fragment color. Regular textures are applied during the fragment stage via sampling for smooth color transitions. The height map will be applied during the vertex stage, but sampling can only be made during the fragment stage. However, we can access the height map pixel data directly without a sampler. Let's see how our mesh surface looks like without height mapping. Also, the vertex shader does not include the height map yet. The only thing it does is apply the model transformation and camera transformation. The fragment shader does only have a hard-coded color. With the WebGPU API, we must create a texture object for the height map and upload the bitmap data to the GPU, just like a regular texture. Then we must bind the texture to the shader program via a bind group. With a bind group, the vertex shader program can access the texture data. Then in the vertex shader program, I bind the texture to a variable of type texture storage 2D with the correct binding index, so I can use it below in the main function. Since the usage of this texture is storage, as specified in the bind group, I must also specify that the access type is read. So then I use the built-in function texture load to access the pixels of the texture with indices. I must know the width and the height of the image. For that I can also use the built-in function texture dimensions to get the texture dimensions. 
Having these dimensions, I multiply them with the UV coordinates of the vertex to get the corresponding pixel of the height map. With the RGB pixel values, I create an average value to get the height factor. Then I modify the vertex input position by adding the normal vector multiplied by the height factor and also by an additional scaling factor. With this additional scaling factor I can adjust the height offset. And this is the result so far. I would like to visualize the height difference more clearly. Therefore I extend the vertex shader such that it also outputs the height factor with the output structure. For that I add another member in the output structure definition and in the main function I set the height factor value. The fragment shader receives the height factor. For that I define a structure and expect the height factor as a member. In the main function I add an input variable with a structure type and use the height factor to multiply the red value of the result color. The higher the height, the more red color is rendered. Alright, that's it with the height map with WebGPU. Check out the GitHub and try it out yourself.